everyone, this is Marshall Official. And can I just say right now that one, I'm sorry I didn't get this video out sooner, and two, holy crap, we have seen some stuff happening over in Ukraine for the last couple of days. And I'm sorry I haven't been covering it. I don't think, I, I don't think I've posted a video since like the 8th or the 7th on, on Ukraine. So it's been almost a week. So we're going to be covering all the map changes since then. Obviously, we'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, I'll make this as quickly as possible, but this is massive. Like we got some massive stuff to talk about here. And uh, we'll go through what happened politically off the battlefield today. We'll go through that as well. That'll be at the end of the video. Let's just get, we're just gonna get right on into a map update right now because we got a lot to talk about. First of all, Kherson, Zaporizhia, nothing. So just don't worry about that front. We didn't see any changes there happening over the last uh, several days, but we do have changes starting down here in southern Donetsk, and we're gonna see some major changes down here in southern Donetsk and a few other places. So st starts off some a minor one. Russian forces are getting towards Zolota and Nirva. This is important because Russian forces might push along this road and reach Bleaky Nevasilka. Before the Russian forces got to the edge of it, raided right at, right at Vrimivka by pushing through this way. This area is a lot more defended, but this area probably not so much. The Russian forces can break through Zolota Neva and they can push straight to Bleaky Nevasilka, getting behind these villages, and they will be able to reach the city without even going through these villages again. So, that seems to be the Russian effort. They say they did advance here. We did see some Russian advances here beforehand, so this is an older advance. But they captured this village, and now, now they, and they have kept going. So there is an effort here to push along that road. All right, here, this is our first big one. Russian forces have broken through and captured Vodiane. They've also almost completely captured this coal mine. And they've also captured this other coal mine. There's two coal mines, it looks like. A coal mine there, and this is a big Terracon coal mine right there. They've, they've captured that, and by capturing this area right here, they have effectively cut Volodar off. Volodar is now all alone in this massive field with no good roads or anything to supply it. If the Russian forces launch any sort of concentrated attack, or if they keep on advancing and get behind the city, it's Ukraine's at that point will have no choice but to retreat. But even then, it's basically already too late because it's just this village has nothing going in or out of it. It's just open field. So it's even if they try to escape, now it'll be hard. If the Russian forces get behind the city, or behind the town and surround it, start to surround it from back here, pulling out like this way, will be basically a death sentence anyways. It's, it's going to be death or surrender at that point. But the Russian forces are now extremely close to doing that. So Volodar, a, a city that has become a symbol of Ukrainian defense for so long, because of how hard it has held out against against Russian attack, especially the big battle, a big battle for Volodar at the start of 2023, which was a major defeat for Russia, it will likely fall to Russia very soon, and the Ukrainians will will, will basically just surrender or just give it up. Okay, Konstantinivka, the smaller town version, not the big city. Uh, the, uh, so the Russian forces have begun to advance to the west of it, moving towards Keturinivka. So the Russian forces have begun their advance to the west of Konstantinivka. Uh, not not much, not not a major deal, but they have kept some ground here, a few tree lines, nothing major. Now we get to the big one. This is enormous. Russian forces have, out of seemingly nowhere, nobody saw this coming. Everybody had their eyes eyes upon this pocket up here, but nobody saw this coming. Russian forces completely broke through west of Krasnohorivka, and they have also and they have completely managed to steamroll across this, along this railway. But I believe it's a railway, or is it a road? I think it's a railway. Or so they managed to steamroll along this railway right into and, and capture the village of Hostry as well at the same time. Fully capturing, also fully captured the, the, the last part of Krasnorivka here and up here as well. Captured that so that it is now absolutely true that Krasnorivka is 100% under Russian control. Russian forces have absolutely broken through this front. If they keep this up, they will re... If, if they can do... Just look at Okay, let's just see this. Because Russian forces advanced from here all the way to here. In one day, they advanced 4.16 miles. If they do that again... Russian forces can pull that off again. They will reach. They will be able to reach. Out, all the way to here. So they'll be able to reach like all the way to here. In, in, in Karakoa. And that's what I think the Russian forces are aiming for. They're aiming for the take Karakoa. Which is which is Ukraine's kind of like their fallback point. So if they were to double this advance. They would already reach into the city of Karakova. Just like that. They also would reach this reservoir of the Volcha River. This big lake area. Of that's part of the Volcha River. And essentially encircle all these like 
this big conglomerate of large towns. So this is absolutely enormous. And talking about that, Russian forces have also moved, have begun their, have finally begun to move into the territory that Ukraine has abandoned. They've pulled back to around where this road is right here, and a little bit, and a little bit in front of it. And the Russian forces are now, are now moving and capturing the free territory that that the Ukrainians left behind. So absolutely, if there was any denying that Russian forces seem to have actually switched their efforts away from taking Polkarov towards this wide open south southern Donetsk. I think this is your a good sign that it, it has really happened. We started to see Russian, for, uh, Russian forces advancing here before, but now this is absolutely enormous. Russian forces seem like they're aiming for the for the towns of to capture the cities of Kurakova and Drivka and Veliki Novosilka. Russian forces are seeking so the Russian forces are seeking to capture something like this. What's going on? Here? Russian forces are seeking to capture you know some something along these lines. This is what the Russian forces want to capture right here. And it could be a diversion. That's one possibility. And I, I don't see it as impossible, but at this point, this really looks like a major effort by the Russians. They're advancing down here and all the way up to here. And they're not aiming for Polk Road. It looks like they really are aiming for the southern area. I personally feel like this could be a mistake by the Russians. Because the Polk Road, if it gets very, very well defended, that could be a problem. Because... Right now, from what we've heard, the city is not very well defended. So, if the Russian forces can just storm it and take it over, that'd be excellent for them. But they seem to have actually changed their efforts. It looks like the Russian forces are not going for Polk Roof, and they are, in fact, aiming for these areas down here. And here's the thing. This is why Polk Roof is so important. If Polk Rolsk falls, there's no major city whatsoever left in anywhere in southern Donetsk. It, it, they will have all fallen at that point. The Polk Road Falls, every inch of southern Donetsk is just open territory for the Russians. And on top of that, talking about that, Russian forces can easily will be so close to reaching into the next blast over. The, what was it, the Pavlo? No, the Dnipro Petrovsk Oblast. And they can do that, would be a major political win for them, you know, reaching, reaching the next blast over. So, and strategically, they will have cut Donetsk in half. They will be able to cut off most a lot of the supplies heading for these heading for the the big five the big five major cities defending northern so northern Donetsk is very well defended southern Donetsk and central Donetsk if if Polk Road falls is like open territory for the Russians but northern northern Donetsk is very well defended hard and Russian forces are not seeing much success there trying to reach and even capture these major cities so that's probably not going to happen but the Russian forces absolutely are doing is is just running through the southern Donetsk, which is way more easily to very more way more easy to easy to take so i think this is why i think it could be a diversion it could be a diversion of forces that have slung south to draw the ukraine force and sent the polk growth away from polk growth down to Korakova to defend this direction over here only for russian forces to suddenly launch their major attack and attack polk growth all out so is it's either a diversion it's, it's either a diversion or this is the Russians' real effort. They lo it looked like they were going for Polk Road. Now they are switching to taking Southern Donetsk. So we'll see what happens. It, you know, it, it's honestly it's hard to tell what they're what the Russian forces are really aiming for at this point. But it's one thing all we know. One thing all we know for sure: the Ukrainian lines are simply falling to pieces at this point. The Ukrainians just cannot do this anymore. But it's just and now we see major advances like this, like this, like this. Let's get into this. Ukrotsky has basically fallen at this point. The Ukraine forces still, still hold the Terracon, but they are being surrounded by the Russian forces. And that's another thing. Russian forces are not wasting their time attacking head-on well fortified positions. We were talking just a little bit ago in my last video how Ukrotsky was going to be very hard to fall. Russian forces were back here before. That Ukrotsky was going to be very hard to capture because it was, although it was not very big, it's almost the whole thing is just high-rise buildings, which are hard to capture. What did the Russian forces do? They encircled it. They started to encircle it. Earlier in the war, they wouldn't do that. The Russian forces fought very just uncoordinatedly and very stupid, really. They would just attack head on. Just go, go, go. Attack these four or five positions. Now, they, they the Russian forces have clearly shown their improvement. They they, they got a lot of, they got a big four or five position with a lot of high rise buildings. Well surrounded. Just surrounded and forced them to either escape or surrender. And that's what they're that's that's basically what the Russian forces have done. With the Ukraine, it's almost it's almost completely encircled with, with the left what's left of it, and and most of it has, and just because of that, most of it has fallen into Russian hands. The Ukraine forces were forced to abandon it. So, Russian forces are fighting way smarter. 
And at this point, they're either launching. This is either a massive diversionary attack onto the southern Donetsk. It could. It's either a diversion to attack Volkrov, or it's simply true that the Russian forces are breaking through, even when they're not even trying to, because the Ukraine forces lines are just falling to pieces. Either way, what is true: the Ukraine lines, southern Donetsk, have fallen to pieces. The Ukraine forces in southern Donetsk just cannot hold on any longer. They have to retreat. They are, they can just they just can't do this anymore. They are they are running low on supplies and everything. In Tourette's, we don't have, we don't have a lot of changes, but once again, for the second time now, new, the battle for New York is over. The Ukrainian forces were, were retreated and were pu pushed out of the city. The city has fallen back in Russian control, and now Russian forces have actually advanced further than they were when they were pushed back. They've taken over a, a big chunk of Nepilivka. They've also, they also taken this area over here. So if Russian forces can keep on going, they will reach the town of Leo, Le, Leon Nedivka. Leon, Leon the Nivka. Russian forces also finally managed to capture the prison inside the city and have advanced further. So, Russian forces will, are likely going to seek to capture this area right here, which is separated from the rest of the city. Capture this area right here. And then move on to the Terracons, while at the same time moving north of this high rise building area. Not to, so, they, they won't storm it directly, they'll try to surround it, just like they've been doing. Surround it, force the Ukrainians out. Much, but it is going much slower in Tourette's. You, Tourette's is fighting back a lot more than Southern Donetsk is. But that's nothing. If Tourette's falls, then Central Donetsk, again, nothing. Just look, there's not a single major city after Tourette's. So if Tourette's and Polk Rose falls, Central and Southern Donetsk will be open for the taking for the Russian forces. I didn't mention it, but we do have some Russian advances here on, towards the village of Lysivka. It looks, it looks like Russian forces, if they are still pushing for Polk Rose, are, are, are trying to capture this si series of villages here so they can then launch their attack on the Polk Rose from the southern direction. But the Ukrainian forces did launch a counterattack here, advancing southward. They were able to retake the village of Mikolaivka and parts of Krasny, Krasny Yar. They, they attempted to advance further. They have they did expand the Gray Zone, and they did attempt to advance further south They attempt by launching armored assaults. It was very similar to what they did in, in Curse, by launching forward, like a little... Like a little one vehicle will race south, launch, put some guys there, cause panic, Russian forces will fall back, and then they'll move and they claim the territory. So it's like the same thing that didn't curse. The difference here is it, it didn't work. They, they, tried to, they tried to pull the same stuff they pulled in curse, and it didn't work. Russian forces, they did manage to take some territory, but the Russian forces threw them back after that. That was it for them. They just could not hold on any longer. And the Ukraine forces could not repeat what they did in curse. So it, it, the, overall, the attack failed, but they did retake one village. And the Russian forces, however, the Russian forces have begun their advance onto the series of villages south of Polkrovsk. And we already went over everything happening below that. And we, so that's, that's a terrestrial direction. A few advances here. New York has definitely gone and gone and over. Russian forces are just, that, that's, Russian forces have um, fully captured Tourette's, or New York once again. And Tourette's is their next target. All right, got some changes here. In Chatsivyar, Russian forces made a small advance here to the north in the direction of Priya Rivka. Fighting has already been reported heavily around Rio because it looks so the Russian forces have probably begun their attack on the Rio 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 itself, and we'll see soon if the, if the town does fall. Major advances to the south. The Ukraine forces have pulled back west of the, west of the canal. They just get the same thing. We see Ukraine forces just their lines are just simply falling apart in several places, and this is one of them. The Ukraine forces are so busy defending Chesterfield itself that they are failing to defend the area around it, and it looks like the Russian forces. After over a month, either weeks or literally over a month, of banging their heads against the wall, Chesapeake. Chesapeake Yard is very well defended. That's very true. It's also a high ground. So Chesapeake Yard is very well defended. So it's very hard for the Russian forces to storm this city. Because it is. this is where Ukraine is really holding strong. They're not going to let the city fall that easily. But Russian forces now seem to have switched their strategy away from hitting the city itself. To surrounding it. It's, it's just like Ukronsky, just on a bigger scale. So they can't take the city directly by storming it directly. Then we're going to go around it. So that's basically what we saw happening in, in U Ukronsky. It's just on a bigger scale now. The Russian forces are advancing to the south and to the north. If they keep going, they're going to get behind it. And we see the Russian forces have already crossed the canal. Here's the south. They've managed to capture a part of this forestry here. Capture the whole thing. And they'll, they'll just keep going. There is a little bit of territory here. Still, the Ukraine still control across the canal, but I'm sure this will probably be they'll probably retreat from here soon enough. Uh, not much else to do. But a few changes on the Luhansk uh, Kharkiv front. Russian forces made some advances in Makivka. 
this village has been being it's been it's been fought over so heavily for a long time, but the Russian forces are slowly taking advantage and starting to push the Ukrainians back. Not a major advance today, but they have pushed the Ukrainians back to the river and over it. So we'll see if I keep it full completely soon enough. So far it hasn't, but it is heating up in that area. Nothing else to talk about really from this area. Kashane, we have minor changes, nothing much. Uh, but we do have advances in Sinkivka. In Sinkivka, Russian the Russian forces have managed to capture this territory right here. In the forestry, there are already reports of them advancing southward towards Petropavlivka and have reached the first town of it, or reached the first houses of it right here. If Petropavlivka falls, it will be an excellent staging point to attack the city of Kupian. So this area is heating up as well. With Sinkivka finally being captured after so long, the Russian forces are now taking advantage and are continuing their advance southward. No change on the Volshan fronts. This area has actually come almost shockingly. It was all, it's kind of hard to believe that this area has become this static. You know, this is Russia's incursion into the Kharkiv Oblast, and it's really nothing. Yeah, you know, it's really, it's really just slowed down. Even the even in Volchansk, we probably got Russian forces, you know, bombing areas here, but it, and, and just look at this. This has been like this for so long. Like it's good. It's pretty clear at this point that both sides have really just, you know, what said we're going to sit here and do nothing. Both both what the Russian forces in this area and the Ukrainian forces in this area have said, you know what, screw it. I'm not going to attack the Russians, and the Russians have said, I'm not going to try and push any further. We're just going to sit here, and this area is. This is just like the, honestly, the, I would say that the car that the Volchans front is almost as quiet, if not as quiet, as the Kherson front at this point. Which is shocking, but we've just this area's been this this front has actually almost been forgotten, really. Like the just like the Kurs front. Kurson front. Let's go up to Kurs, and you already see major changes. First of all, small things, Russian forces had a little attack, a little advance right there and recaptured the town of Borky, but except for this part up here. Uh, Ukraine forces were able to capture whatever the heck that thing is. A uh, small little advance there. Two small little Ukrainian advances here. Or, sorry, sorry, only one. We have one here, and that's about it. So, one little small Ukrainian advance. But, major Russian advance to the west. Russian forces have uh, Russian forces have now definitely begun a counteroffensive. And this is this has gone on for uh, the last five days. Started on the 10th. And over the last five days, they've managed to recapture major ground. And they're not stopping. They are continuing their offensive and are pushing eastward. Clearly, they seek to push Ukraine back over the border and surround their forces in this area up here and push onto Suja. And they're not stopping. This is continuing. This is not this is not in one day, but this is over the last couple of days. So I just put it as one giant thing. They've recaptured Snuggles. That was big. Recapturing this. And they've just continued on, not stopping. And it's Russian forces have really turned the tide and cursed. And cursed it is the tide has turned now. The Ukrainians are on the retreat, and it's and if they keep it up in another week or so, Russian forces will probably retake Suja and all those positions up here if they if they can keep it up. Uh, at the same time, the Ukraine forces have crossed the border and captured this itty bitty. I, I is this even a village? I don't even see a building. This little forest forest patch village called Novri Put has fallen to Ukraine. It's the I'm guessing this is a small little incursion just to try and distract the Russians from what the, what's going on over here. It has already failed. The Ukraine forces took it and they tried to advance onto Oberkovka and they were pushed back immediately. It's just not going to happen. The Ukraine forces just, just don't have the forces to push forward. If it is major, they need more re if this, if this is supposed to, if this is a major attack, then they need to bring in the more reinforcements because the force attack completely failed. So this is a made, small little Ukrainian attack to try and turn the tide of what's going on, but it's clear at this point. It's now clear Russian forces have turned the tide, and the Ukrainians are on the retreat at this point. They're on. The, they're on their their car, their Kursk incursion has totally failed, or to achieve what it wanted to achieve. They have not managed to capture Rilk. They have not managed to capture the city of Ivana Iv, Ivanino Ivino Ivanivo. Sorry, I can't. I can't say that one. They have not managed to capture any of those major cities. They have not managed to capture uh, any. They've not. They've not managed to come anywhere near the major cities. The, the only thing. They, the only thing managed to capture that was somewhat significant was Suja, and that is pretty big. But they captured that. That's true. But other than that, nothing. 
So they're overall they completely failed to achieve their goals, and and now they really are on the retreat. So in, in even in cursed, their big offensive in the cursed is now they are now retreating, and they're retreating everywhere else as well, especially in southern Donetsk. So that's your map update. Let's go to some of the let's go to some of the political political changes. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this quickly because I don't I don't want this video to be an hour long. For you guys, let's just go straight to the political updates now. Major political updates as well. I will say that right now. Okay, so first of all, um, some, uh, some news about prisoner swaps. Uh, another exchange of prisoners took place. Ukraine returned 103 soldiers from Russian captivity. So, okay, so a prisoner exchange took place. The media write that Ukraine has a request for 12 AH-1Z Viper attack helicopters from the United States, which Slovakia may refuse. Um, not sure what Slovakia has. I'm not. I've, I need more information than that. I'm not really sure what Slovakia has anything to do with that with the United States. But, anyways, um, moving on. Poland will allocate 100 million euros to the Czech Initiative to purchase ammunition for the Ukrainian army. Half this year and the rest next year. So 100 million euros, not a big deal. But uh, in other words, it, but it is a lot. It is more money going to the Czech Initiative. Uh, let's move on. Poland is considering the possibility of transferring additional MiG-29 fighters to Ukraine. Uh, MiG-29 fighters are Russian air, are Russian um, planes, but they are some in Polish hands and other Eastern other Eastern European countries. So the MiG-29s, they're an older generation though; they're not as good as what the Russian ha Russian ha Russia has today. But they're they are still usable. They are old but still usable. So you, um, Poland is talking about giving some more to Ukraine. So Ukraine, they've already done that before, but that's not not a big deal. But uh, it, anything helps. Anything helps Ukraine works. Uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz said that Germany will not send long-range Taurus missiles to you armed forces of Ukraine. So, Taurus missiles are long-range German missiles. They would be very helpful to Ukraine if they could get them. But Germany has been... They, Germany at one point said that if they will give them to Ukraine. Then they said no. And now Olaf Scholz is making clear that the answer is officially no. It's not. It's just not going to happen. So, obviously, yes, some Ukraine won't be very happy about that. But Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, is clearly saying that that's just not going to happen. You want to know why he's doing this? In the states in Germany, if we go over to Germany, in the states of Schassen and I think Thuremberg, something like that, Thuremberg, Schassen and Thuremberg, uh, the AFD party won the elections, I believe, or they won in one of them. They were second place in the other, and that's major because the AFD party is Germany's far right party, and for the very first time, Germany, every single one of Germany's elections has been more and more left wing. Germany has become such a left wing country. They're nothing like what they were, what they used to be in World War One and Two and before that. They're just nothing like what they used to be. But now the AFD party, this German far right party, is winning, and there is a chance. Ever and oh by the way, Olaf Scholz's party, the socialist liberal, literally the socialist liberal party. Like come on, socialist liberal party, the opposite of far right basically far left or middle left, or at the very least, it's between middle and far left. The Socialist Liberal Party, they're way down. Like they're like they're not even in the top two or top three anymore. Like they're down down. Like it's not looking good for them at all. They used to be the top party. So now they've been replaced by they the a German far right party is now the second most popular con uh second most popular party in the country of Germany. So that's that is enormous news. Germany and the Germany Germany's election is next year. So I'm gonna bet what Olaf Scholz is doing is that he's is that he is starting to reduce his support for Ukraine because he might he wants a shot at winning the election again, and there's a chance it's almost guaranteed that the Christian Conservative Party, the CDU, something like that, the Christian Conservative Party, uh, or the Christian or the Christian Democratic Union Party, the which is like which is like it's a it's a lean right party, it's like a middle right party, so right wing but not super right wing. Party, uh, it's a conservative party. They will, um, they are going to, they're going to win the election. They're almost guaranteed to win the election. And there's also a chance that the AFD party will win the election because they're also ahead of, of the social liberal party. They're in second place, so they could win the election too. Not much of a chance, but it could happen. So Germany is really turning it around. They're going, you know, Germany's saying, you know, we've got to go back to how we were before, is what's going on in Germany. And Olaf Schultz is like, you know, trying to, Keep the support on him by appeasing to those people. So let's move on. Canada supports Ukraine's right to strike military targets on Russian territory with long-range weapons. Okay, so they're saying so Canada's giving their support to Ukraine using their weapons on Russia. Uh, the U.S. agreed to a to the possible sale of 32 F-35 fighter jets to Romania. 
So the U.S. will give some, will possibly give some F-35 fighter jets to Romania. Not, not huge news. It's just a simple sale of weaponry, if you will. Uh, the United States does not plan to change its policy on granting Ukraine permission to use long-range missiles. White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby. So, last couple of days, there's been talk, hey, maybe the U.S. is going to give Ukraine that, that okay to use our missiles on Russian territory. But John Kirby, John Kirby today is saying that, you know what? That's just not going to happen. So there's no plan for that to happen. So Ukraine, sorry, but it's just not going to happen. Uh, according to Zelensky, Ukraine now has more patriotic, patriot systems in service than was originally reported. But there are still not enough of them. Just like the missiles before them. Uh, NATO countries will start a direct war with the Russian Federation if they give, give Kiev the go-ahead to use long-range weapons, the Russian ambassador to the U.S. The Russian ambassador is saying, you use those weapons, you give Ukraine to use those weapons on us, it will be basically like starting World War III, is what he's saying. That's what he's, so he's going as far to threaten World War III. Uh, sure, you held talks with Kim Jong-un. They discussed expanding cooperation between Russia and North Korea, including in military technical sphere. Russia and North Korea are getting closer together. That is true. It's been happening for a while now. And that's your last one. That's it. So that, that's your political update for that's your pol political political update for today, and that's also your major major map of the map update. I'll try to avoid. I've been so you know busy with, with the debates and what's been going on with the election that I haven't been able to focus on this. So I'm very happy to be back making these updates again. I can, I, will, I will try to get one out tomorrow as well if it's if it's worth making one. There's enough changes. So with that, guys. That's going to be all for today. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the no bell notification. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.